What if the old smartphone sitting in your junk drawer could be broken down and turned into a brand new device in just a few months? And that every single day, over 83.6 million pounds of electronic waste are processed worldwide, recovering precious metals like gold and silver while preventing toxic chemicals from polluting the environment. From collecting to refining, this is how massive factories recycle almost 83.6 million pounds of electronic waste every day. E-waste is piling up at an alarming rate. Every year, we toss out around 62 million metric tons of old electronics, phones, laptops, appliances, you name it. By 2030, that number will hit 82 million metric tons. The problem? These devices are packed with toxic materials like lead and mercury that can poison the environment. But they're also full of valuable resources, gold, silver, copper, and rare earth metals, just waiting to be recovered. Right now, only 22% of e-waste gets properly recycled. The rest, dumped in landfills or processed in unsafe conditions. That's where industrial recycling facilities come in, handling millions of pounds of discard electronics every single day. But how do they do it? Let's take a look. Before electronic waste can be recycled, it first has to be collected from homes, businesses, and factories that discard millions of devices every single year. Governments and companies have set up drop-off centers, trade-in programs, and recycling bins at major retailers to keep e-waste out of landfills. Some brands even offer discounts in exchange for old devices, encouraging proper disposal. Once collected, e-waste is loaded onto trucks and transported to massive recycling plants designed to process thousands of tons daily. These facilities use advanced machinery to dismantle, sort, and extract valuable materials. Many also have on-site data destruction services to prevent identity theft and corporate fraud, ensuring that no sensitive information remains on discarded devices. Because e-waste contains hazardous materials like lead and mercury, transportation is strictly regulated in many countries. The European Union's WEEE Directive, for example, requires manufacturers to take responsibility for recycling their products. But despite these efforts, a large amount of e-waste still gets illegally exported to countries with weak environmental laws, where it's often processed under dangerous conditions. When truckloads of e-waste reach a recycling facility, the first step is sorting. Workers separate large appliances like refrigerators and TVs from smaller gadgets like phones and laptops. Batteries, especially lithium-ion ones, are removed immediately to prevent explosions or leaks. Sorting is crucial because different devices require different recycling methods. Monitors contain leaded glass, while smartphones hold valuable metals like gold and silver. Next comes manual dismantling, one of the most labor-intensive steps. Skilled workers take apart devices by hand, extracting reusable components like circuit boards, processors, and memory chips. If these parts are too damaged or outdated, they're broken down further to recover valuable metals. Older electronics, like CRT monitors and early LCD screens, need special handling. CRTs have high lead content that must be safely removed before the glass can be repurposed, while older LCDs contain mercury, which requires careful extraction. Some components also contain toxic chemicals like PCBs, which must be treated through specialized processes to prevent environmental harm. Proper dismantling ensures hazardous materials don't contaminate landfills while recovering as many valuable resources as possible. Once e-waste is dismantled, it moves to the shredding phase. Giant industrial shredders rip devices apart, breaking them into smaller fragments. This isn't just about size, it makes it easier to separate different materials efficiently. These machines can process thousands of electronics per hour, turning everything from old computers to cables into manageable pieces. After shredding, the material goes through a series of separation techniques. First, powerful magnets pull out iron and steel, sending them to steel mills to be reused in construction and manufacturing. Then, eddy currents push non-ferrous metals like aluminum, copper, and gold away from the rest. Plastics and glass are separated using water. Since they have different densities, plastics float while heavier metals and glass sink, making extraction simple. Recovered plastics are cleaned, melted into pellets, and repurposed for new electronics, car parts, or even furniture. By the end of this stage, the once jumbled mass of e-waste is neatly sorted, with every material ready for the next step in the recycling process. Once e-waste is broken down into raw materials, it's time for purification. Metals, plastics, and glass don't come out of the shredders perfectly clean. They're often covered in paint, coatings, adhesives, or chemicals that need to be removed before they can be reused. The process starts with sending metals to smelters, where they're heated to extreme temperatures to burn off impurities. 
Copper, aluminum, and steel are melted down and refined, while gold and silver undergo additional treatments to ensure they're as pure as freshly mined metals. Some metals need a more delicate approach. Copper, for example, goes through electrolytic refining, where an electric current strips away contaminants, leaving behind a pure, high-quality material. Precious metals like gold and palladium are carefully extracted using chemical treatments that dissolve everything else, allowing the valuable metals to be recovered and reused in new electronics. But some of the most sought-after materials in e-waste are rare earth elements, things like neodymium, dysprosium, and terbium. These metals are crucial for electric car motors, wind turbines, and smartphone speakers, but they're incredibly hard to mine. The global supply is tightly controlled, making them expensive and politically sensitive. That's why recycling them is so important. To pull these rare elements from old electronics, recyclers use advanced chemical processing. Hydrometallurgical techniques dissolve electronic components in special solutions, selectively extracting rare earth metals. Some facilities are even using bio-leaching, where bacteria break down e-waste and naturally pull out valuable metals. Others are experimenting with plasma arc technology, which blasts electronic waste with superheated plasma, vaporizing everything except the useful metals. Once the purification process is complete, the newly refined materials are ready to be reintroduced into the supply chain. Metals like aluminum, copper, and steel are melted down and reshaped into raw materials that manufacturers use for a wide range of applications. Some of these metals go directly into making new consumer electronics, while others are used in automotive production, aerospace engineering, and even infrastructure projects. A single recycled copper wire, for example, might find its way into a new smartphone, a power grid, or even a high-speed train. Plastics recovered from e-waste are another crucial resource. After being separated and purified, these plastics are shredded into tiny pellets and sent to factories that manufacture new electronic casings, household goods, and even furniture. Some high-grade plastics are turned into insulation materials for buildings, while others are blended with newly produced plastic to create hybrid materials with enhanced durability. In some cases, facilities have developed processes to convert waste plastics into synthetic fuel, which can be used to power industrial machinery, reducing reliance on fossil fuels. Glass from old CRT monitors and LCD screens undergoes a separate refinement process. CRT glass, which contains lead, must be carefully processed to remove toxic elements before it can be repurposed. Once cleaned, the glass can be used for new display panels, fiber optics, or even in the construction industry, where it is crushed and used as an additive for road materials and insulation. Some recycling plants are working on transforming e-waste glass into specialty ceramics for advanced applications like aerospace and medical devices. Beyond raw materials, some fully functional electronic components can be salvaged, tested, and refurbished for resale. Microchips, memory modules, and processors that pass quality inspections are wiped clean, repackaged, and sold as refurbished parts. The growing second-hand electronics market has increased demand for these components, providing consumers with more affordable options while reducing unnecessary waste. Larger items like desktop computers, servers, and gaming consoles often have reusable parts that can be harvested and reintegrated into new systems. Power supplies, cooling fans, and display screens are among the components most frequently repurposed. Some companies specialize in refurbishing entire devices, restoring them to like new condition, and selling them at a fraction of the cost of brand new products. Recycling e-waste reduces pollution, conserves resources, and keeps tech affordable. Refurbishing creates jobs and extends device lifespans, but millions of tons still end up in unregulated dumps, poisoning communities. Smarter design, stricter laws, and responsible choices can turn waste into opportunity. Every discarded device holds value. It's up to us to use it wisely. Recycling e-waste isn't just about recovering metals. It's about keeping devices in use longer. The less we throw away, the less we need to mine, reducing pollution and making technology more accessible. Refurbishing old electronics has become a growing industry, creating jobs and providing affordable tech to those who need it. Some nonprofits repair and donate used computers and phones to schools in underserved communities, giving outdated devices a second life. But real change starts with designing electronics to last, making them easier to repair, upgrade, and recycle. A sustainable future depends on smarter manufacturing and better consumer choices. Even with high-tech recycling facilities, millions of tons of e-waste never make it to the right place. Instead, they're illegally dumped in countries with little regulation, where workers, often children, take apart devices by hand, exposing themselves to dangerous chemicals. 
These unsafe methods pollute the air, soil, and water, putting entire communities at risk. Some countries have laws requiring manufacturers to handle recycling responsibly, but enforcement is weak. As the demand for cheap electronics rises, so does the problem of illegal dumping. E-waste isn't just trash, it's full of valuable materials that can be reused. Proper recycling keeps toxic waste out of the environment, reduces the need for harmful mining, and lowers the cost of manufacturing new devices. But with technology advancing faster than ever, e-waste is only going to increase. The solution? Smarter recycling, stricter laws, and better choices from both companies and consumers. Every old device holds value. It's up to us to make sure it doesn't go to waste. And that's how over 83.6 million pounds of electronic waste are recycled every single day, recovering valuable materials while keeping toxic waste out of landfills. Which part of the process surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this behind the scenes look, be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more fascinating factory processes.